talked a little bit about the journey of women over the last four years, but tell me about your journey over the last 29 years, particularly working in a male-dominated industry like Aramco. What did you learn? What did you take from that? You know, my relationship with Aramco is much longer than 29 years. I was born in Aramco Hospital. I studied in Aramco schools. In fact, it was a, a compound with expats. And I actually thought that was a country. And I remember um, one kid asked me where, where, I asked him where he was from, and he said Texas. And then he asked me where I'm from. And I said Aramco. I thought that was a country. And so, of course, we had a movie theater, we had a fire station, we had a hospital, we had everything that needed to sustain ourselves. And of course, that, that wasn't where my growth was. My growth happened when I, when I went into my own society and learned about who my country really is, and that's who my identity. After that, of course, I joined Aramco. 29 years. Um, it was an amazing journey. It was like working with 100 different companies because moving from one division to another is a whole learning experience by itself. So I feel uh, really privileged to have that opportunity and go up the corporate ladder. Um, but still, when the higher you go up the corporate ladder, you realize how lonely it is and how very few women there are. And that's what inspired me to found the Arab Institute for Women's Empowerment. So tell me a bit more about the goals of Nusbah, because again, you know, you, if you look at Vision 2030, there is a plan for increasing women's participation in the workforce. What do you want your, you know, Nusbah and the, the Institute to play a part in that? You know, the country is doing so amazing. I, it's an exciting time to be a Saudi woman, really. But, but more than that, um, we rely on the country to do so much for us. First of all, Saudi women um, are number, the number one most educated women in the Arab world, number one. They're number 10, they're ranked number 10 globally. Yet, their participation in the economy, the unemployment rate, is one of the highest. So we're here to make sure that we close that and make sure that women participate in helping to build their economy. When women participate equally as much as men do, they add $400 billion to the Saudi economy. That's equivalent to 36,000 riyals to every man, woman, and child. So, so it makes absolute sense. If the country invests in you, you have a, a role, a national role, to reinvest in your country, and that's how this was formed. Now, before we came on stage, you were telling me about three pillars the three pillars of NUSP. I tell the audience about those and what they represent. So NUSP is based on three pillars that we believe are a holistic program to make sure that there is no gap in between. We have the EQUIP program, and this is um, the training arm that invests in women through training at the entry level by training them with soft skills, how to personal branding, communication, uh, negotiation skills, Women, Saudi women, have the highest technical degrees, um, yet they don't have um, leadership skills or soft skills. Why? Because we weren't exposed to that. Boys, when they were young, they would um, go with their father to the shop they owned or to his office. Girls didn't have that opportunity, so our soft skills were much more limited. And also, as a Saudi woman, we were taught that we needed to be more soft-spoken, reserved, um, not a negotiator, and I want to mention that, that these soft skills don't contradict with the values that we've been brought up with. So the quick pillar contains uh, the entry level, manager level, and global executive program that we invest. And then there's the research uh, component, and this is where we focus on the gaps. What, where are the gaps that are preventing women from participating in their own economy? Believe it or not, a, certain, a degree is not enough. Some women just don't want to work. And we want to say, 
there, there's an obligation for you to add value to your own country. And this is where we want to get data and provide that kind of recommendations um, to, to companies that need that. And the third pillar, which is the most important in my view, and the one that you can't measure, is the connect pillar. This is where social barriers get in the way of women's advancement. As a society, we have a lot of social barriers that have prevented us from, from advancing. And we, as a society, don't want, don't want um, uh, the outside to come and interfere with it. It's us, we need to resolve our own issues together by ourselves and address them, whatever they are whether it's uh, uh, setbacks, challenges, success stories. And so we have several initiatives on that. The first one is NUS Voices. NUS Voices is a podcast that discuss, discusses the, the success stories, the setbacks, the challenges of men and women. Women cannot advance if they don't have the support of their community, in particular if they don't have the support of the man. The man is going to be her boss, who's going to give her the promotion, or not. He's the father who's going to support her or sponsor her. He's the husband who's going to uh, support her, uh, even the brother and the son. So it's important as a society that all of us thrive together. It shouldn't be us versus them. It should be a community that advances together. So Nus Voices talks about some of the taboos that we have and how do we get around it? And the second uh, one is walk. Uh, the second one is the monthly leadership talk, where we have a monthly gathering to talk about women entrepreneurship. What are the best practices that we could do? Third um, initiative is walk the talk, and this happened a couple of weeks ago on International Women's Day, where um, for me in Aramco, I I uh, mentored many many women and all of them would come in my office and um, it, it, we'd have a gathering in a formal setting. And that bothered me that it's not informal. So, and mentorship is very important. So we created a Walk the Talk, and this is a walking mentorship program where um, we uh, I've, uh, identified 25 senior executive women and matched them with 25 young professional women and we walked on the Cornish and Khobar, because that's where I'm from. And um, they had a session of one hour where they get to talk about the challenges, the journeys, and all of that. But what inspired me is that this initiative that happened in uh, Khobar had feet and spread in Riyadh, in Jeddah, in Medina, and in Jof. And it was sponsored by uh, Mushaad. So I'm so excited that that NUSF is spreading, um, us as a society, are, we're thriving, we're acknowledging it. We need to realize the male champions who support the women, we want to talk about them. I can tell you stories about my husband, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for my husband who supported my journey. So we want to talk about these men who are always supportive of women, and we as a society can, can um, thrive and grow the way our country is working for us as well. Second time I've been outshone tonight. I didn't have to ask you a single question. Uh, how has <laughs> it outrode me? You've asked me. Uh, asked me. Uh, I have got one last question for you. Uh, Nus, um, once you've got that fully established in Saudi Arabia, what's the dream then? How is Amos talking about dreams in the future earlier? What's your dreams in the future for the Nusra? So because I'm a Saudi woman and I wanted to initiate Nus here because it's the most educated um, society. Uh, but after it's established in Saudi, we plan to open chapters in the GCC and in the MENA region. Why? Because women's issues are the same. Women's challenges are the same in the Arab world. And we want together to rise as a MENA. Our Crown Prince mentioned Saudi Arabia cannot thrive if its neighboring countries and the Arab world is not thriving. We owe it as well to do the same. Also, in 10 years, once that's that that expands and we're lucky to make an impact over there. My plan is to never talk about women again. We just want to talk about society. We want to talk about, I want everybody to be thriving and we don't have any challenges or gaps in our country or in anywhere. 
especially on behalf of my daughter. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please give her a round of applause for that. Um,